Hi there, and welcome to lesson four in Savoia's simple math of success for product managers. I'm thrilled you can be here uh, with me today for lesson four. Well, I'm actually both thrilled and a little bit scared. Thrilled because what I have to share with you with, with, is going to just skyrocket your product management IQ by at least 20 points, right? W what you learn today, very few people, in fact, probably less than 0.1% know and nobody else teaches. Uh, I'm the only one that teaches you these things uh, this way. So that's why I'm thrilled because what you learned today is just so hot. I just can't, can't wait to share it with you. But I'm a little apprehensive because, you know, if you look at, uh, at this board as at the layout of today's lesson, it looks pretty scary, right? Especially this guy, this guy here, and it looks complicated. Well, do not panic, right? Stay with me. Uh, I can promise you the math is no more complicated than addition, subtraction, division, and multiplication. If you have a four-function calculator, you can handle it all. And not only, but you can put in a spreadsheet, a spreadsheet, not a spreadsheet, and never have to look at the formulas uh, again. So today in lesson four, what we're going to learn is this. We're going to learn the difference between probability of success given new data and probability of new data given success. Wait, this is confusing. What's the difference between these two? Well, yes, it is a little bit confusing. And you know what? That confusion is great. It's great because most people see this or think about this and they just tell me, oh, I don't want to deal with this it's complicated. It's too mathy. It's too confusing. And they go away. The one that stick with it will, will have this huge advantage because most people are scared of this. And I tell you, do not be scared. Do not panic. It will all be clear by the end. Uh, I make things simple. That's my promise to you. I'll make things as simple as possible. And in fact, let's do a review and you'll see how simple things, things are, right? And by the way, it's important to review because you, I know you've never learned these things before. So I'm going to repeat the concepts uh, uh, every lesson. I'll do a quick review so they get into your mind better and they stay there. So the, what we learned in the first lesson is the number one, the key question that the product manager must be able to answer is the following. Will this new product succeed in the market? All right now, uh, and I told you that there are several ways that one could answer that question. Most of them are bad. You cannot say yes or no, because there is no guarantee either way, right? You're a charlatan if you do. You cannot just shrug and say, yeah, I hope so. Maybe, I don't know. I think, you know, <laughs> then you look like an income poop. Nor can you do things like, say things like there's a 73.56% chance of success. No. So the first simplification, the first thing I teach you is the answer to this question must be expressed as a probability of success. And that probability can fall into only five buckets that range from very unlikely to very likely. Why only five buckets? Because you don't have the precision to say, you know, 73.56% chance of success. No. In fact, we simplify it to 10%, 30%, 50%, 70%, and 90% chance of success, all right? So that's the first simplification I gave you. The next simplification I gave you has to do with how do you define success? Oh my God, you ask that question to people, how do you define success? You get all these fuzzy answers. I will have none of that. So I've taught you the definition of success should be very, very simple. Success is when your actual results from launching a new product meet or exceed your expected result, right? It's a simple, simple uh, formula. Now you said, well, Albert, how do you, exp how do you express expected results? Once again, my rule, say it with numbers. Once again, I've made it as simple and as clear as possible for you. Uh, none of this fancy thing with big charts and canvases. You explain it as follows. At least X percent of Y will do Z. X percent is a percentage of your target market. Y is your target market, and Z is what you expect them to do. So, um, so your probability of success becomes the probability of your X, Y, Z hypothesis being true. So let me, and then I made it clear with a very simple example, right? So I, for my example, I assume that I invented this marker. I call it the forever marker. You just dip it in water and it keeps writing forever, right? So it never dries up. And this is my X, Y, Z hypothesis for the forever market at least 20% of whiteboard market buyers 
will buy the forever markers at 10 times the cost of regular markers by Q4 2021. See, simple. I put it in numbers, right? This is, this is an ambiguous statement of your definition of success. Everything, the date is defined, the percentage of the market that you hope to capture, the price at which you plan uh, to sell it. So what you want to answer is, what is my probability of success of this hypothesis? All right, so far with me, good. So you see a lot of, a lot of simplifications already. Then we said, okay, how do I find the probability of success? Well, I told you that there is a starting point at the beginning until you collect your own data, assume very unlikely, give it a 0.1 value. So your probability of success when you're off the gate, if all you have is an idea and non, no data that you collected yourself, your probability of success is 0.1. And I don't care who you are, I don't care what your idea is. This is where you start. Why? Because of the law of market failure, which I explain at length in my book, The Right It. I will not re-explain it here, but it says that most new ideas will fail in the market, even if competently executed. If you don't believe me, read the book, do your own market research. You'll see the law of market failure never fails. So at this point, you may be a little disappointed. You say, well, oh, really? My odds of success are 0.1? Don't fear. That's, that's why I'm here. I'm here to help you increase the odds of success from 0.1 to however high you want them to be. No, ideally 0.9. I want to make sure that your product success will be very likely. So, and how do we change things? Well, we, you need your own data, right? You're going to collect your own data, which I abbreviate as Yoda, your own data, bring it to the rescue. How do you collect your own market data? You do pre tapping plus market experiments. Again, what I explain uh, in, in my book. Uh, there are many videos that explain that. So even if you don't want to buy the book, I explain this uh, a lot. So when you do a pre type plus a market experiment, you get new data, you get your data, and that's what you need to plug into the formula. So your probability of success uh, given new data is a number that hopefully is different than this 0.1. So let's see how we would calculate it. So let's assume an experiment. I take you know boxes of my markers before I developed, I use a prototype, I take them to market and I try to see uh, if out of 100 people that are buying markers today, say at Office Depot, see how many of them are interested in buying my new product for five times, uh, for 10 times the price, so $50 instead of five. So there are several market scenarios. So in the first one, we sold, we, we approach 100 people, we only sell three. So what is our probability of success? Well, with this new data, it goes down quite a bit, right? It goes down a lot. What if I approach 100 people and it said 37 people buy it? Wow, that's a lot, right? <laughs> you sell hundreds and hundreds of dollars of this market, so your probability of success goes high. Uh, what if you sell 15 out of 100? You th your goal was to sell at least 20, you sold 15. It's pretty close, but you know, it doesn't exceed, so maybe that's not very conclusive as a result. If you sell 55 out of 100, wow. And then you really got a, a good idea worth uh, worth pursuing and at least after you do more tests and what if you sell 10 out of 100 so in this case your probability of success is a little lower not as bad as if it was three but a little lower and you see <clears throat> i believe in saying things with number and this is where we kind of get confused yes you know the results of this test are encouraging or discouraging or non-conclusive but i like to say things with numbers and you should say too because that's the root of success Say it with numbers, your chances of success will just skyrocket. So how do we say it with numbers, right? How do I calculate the probability of success given new data? Well, here we come to the scary bit, this formula. Now, I'm not going to touch it now. I just want to show it. I'll, I'll explain it in the next videos. Uh, but I just want to show it to you because I want to desensitize you to it, right? It looks complicated. It's actually base formula. And it's a game changer, not for you. A lot of the things in the world today, from the ability to, for, to guess what you're going to type next on your search box, to, I mean, I cannot think of a field today where base formula is not being used to great advantage, especially in connection with computer and uh, machine learning. So it's a game changer. What I've done is I've taken it and I've adapted it to work in our domain, product manager, to, to use it to determine success in product management. 
Now, I know it looks complicated. As I said, do not panic. Please stick with me. My promise is to keep it simple. And in fact, it only has addition, uh, division, and multiplication. I don't even have a subtraction in here. Come on, you can handle it. If you have a calculator, you have four, you know, four function calculator, you can handle this. And if you never want to see it again, once you learn it, put it in a spreadsheet. Heck, I'll give you the spreadsheet and then you'll never have to look at the formula. You just use it, okay? <clears throat> but, 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 in order to use it, you need to learn this lesson today. What is probability of data given success? So remember, in the previous lesson, we learned what is the probability of success given data, meaning uh, if I get this test result, does my probability of, probability of success go up or down? But now I'm going to ask you to flip it around. I'm going to ask you to, to consider this. If this product, if my forever marker, let's assume that they are a market success, we go in the future, what is the likelihood that when I do an experiment, I get a certain piece of data? So probability of data given success is the probability of getting new market data given or assuming that the product was going to be successful. Now you say, Alberto, why do you want to do this? Well, because it is a key component in Bayes' formula. This is what allows us to, to go from an initial probability to get new data and to give you a number uh, for your revised probability of success. Okay, so, and once again, how do we express probability in my world, in this domain, because we're not physics, right? We just, we're dealing with human beings. So the most we could do is to have some relatively broad ranges. So once again, uh, it's the same range, it goes from 0 0.1 to 0 0.9 in steps of 0 0.2, going from very unlikely, likely, uh, you know, uh, not really decisive, uh, likely and very likely, all right? So this is the range. So let me give you some example of how you actually use it, going back to our market experiment. All right, so let's go in, the, in a scenario I, I'm assuming, remember, I'm assuming that this is a successful product and then I'm doing an experiment and I'm asking how likely is it that if this product is successful, I'm getting this result. Uh, so let's assume it's successful. I run my prototyping experiment, as we've shown in a previous lesson, and your result is that out of 100 people, three people buy it. Remember, your goal was greater than or equal to 20 people. So. If this product was bound to be successful, how likely is it that you would get this result? Well, I would say it's very unlikely, right? So, and very unlikely we assign a value of 0 0.1. Okay, let's take another scenario. Uh, once again, we assume success. We sell 10, we expect it to sell 20. Well, this is not as unlikely as the previous one. So instead of being very unlikely, we rate it as unlikely and assign it the value of 0 0.3. Uh, Point three. Are you, are you getting the hang of it? I'm, I know it's a little of a brain twister. You may have to digest it and uh, come back to it, but please stick with me. Th this will make all the difference. Once you get it, it's like riding the bicycle. Maybe tough at first, but once you get it, you internalize it and it will be incredibly useful. Okay, another example. Say you plan, you, are, you say the product is successful. So 20% of people who buy markers uh, buy your forever markets, so you do an experiment, but the number comes back 15. This, you know, this is kind of inconclusive. You know, it's not very unlikely. It's not very likely. It's somewhere in there. So when it's inconclusive, you give it a, a 0 0.5 value. And as you will see there, if you have experiments that give you the 0 0.5 value, those are not very useful experiments. And I'll teach you how to avoid uh, those. Now, in the next scenario, we we go, we we sell. 27 out of 100. So if this product is bound to be successful, how likely is it that we would sell 27 out of 100? Likely, 0 0.7. And in the final one, we go there, we sell 53 out of 100. If a product that's successful, that's gonna sell more than 20 uh, out of 100 markers, uh, people are going to buy this kind of markers, and you get a result of 43, how likely is that our assumption of success is correct? I would say it's very likely, right? So this is one way of looking at it. If how likely is it that our assumption of success is true given the market data, and this is what we're doing here. Again, 
I am sorry if it sounds a little confusing. I admit that it is a little confusing, but if you manage to get through that confusion, right? If you work through this yourself, if you stick with this lesson to the end, kind of maybe, and then go back to the beginning, I'm, I'm just talking here about a couple of hours of your career to digest this, to be far ahead um, of everybody. So next week, uh, in the next cup, I mean, not next week, in the next couple of lessons, we're going to actually dig into this scary looking formula, which is really not scary at all. You know who's scared of this formula? What I call the beast of failure. Failure hates this formula because this is a formula you use to beat uh, failure. So uh, remember, don't be afraid, please. I hope that you stick with me. I hope that you stick with this for your own uh, good. By the way, so if you like this, uh, I'm gonna ask you to give me some skin in the game. Uh, so share, not just like, you know, li li I like likes, but I love reshare. So share this material, share, share, share my tweets with others, share my LinkedIn posts uh, with others, share my YouTube channel uh, with others. Your friends, people you want to succeed, please uh, share. Uh, ask me questions of comments. Uh, I love questions and comments. It shows me, the, shows me that you're interested in it. Uh, buy my book, The Write It. You know, in, in this one, a lot of the foundation for this, uh, minus this, this math, this specific math, is in my book. This is the English version. This is the Japanese version. This is the Korean version. I hope there are more translations coming up uh, soon. And also subscribe and uh, follow me. So once again, thank you for putting up. If you made it this far, congratulations, right? And I know it's complicated. It's a little bit confusing, but stick with me and it will all be worthwhile. And I really do hope to see almost all of you, most of you uh, for the next lesson where we're going to dig in into the scary looking, but actually not scary or complicated at all formula. Thank you so much. Hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.